Have you ever experienced a GM that feels the compulsive need to force their cool Mary Sue character into the spotlight at everyone else's expense? This is the funniest story about the worst DM we've seen in a while, all the way up until the twist ending, the payoff is huge, I promise. But first, thank you to Irish people for sponsoring this video. Have you ever wanted to run your D&D game in a mythical, Celtic-inspired setting? I know what you're thinking. There would never be one of those. Nobody is skilled enough to even attempt it. It's too dangerous. Incorrect. Vagabond's Guide to Dalriada is your very own Celtic-inspired setting. It's packed with new locations, monsters, subclasses, magic items and spells, and more. Now, I know what you're thinking. There would never be leprechauns, banshees, bagpipes, perhaps shenanigans. Ooh, well, prepare to spit your cereal out for a second time, because we have all of that and whiskey. Did I mention that every backer gets a free copy of the Battle of Karagarth? An adventure that pits players against the Morrigan and the might of her undead army. Click the link in the description and back now because you do not want to miss this one. I'll see you there. Anyway, roll post. This happened a while ago during an online game of 5e. The DM seemed nice and the party got along well. After a session zero, we began the campaign as caravan guards. One of the caravan guards was a black dragonborn NPC named Resnir. The star of this tale and the campaign as we later would find out. Resnir was a couple of levels above the rest of the party who were only level 1, but we didn't mind as level 1 PCs are very squishy, and it wasn't unreasonable that there were stronger adventurers than us in the world. Oh, how wrong they were. The caravan gets attacked by orcs and the DM goes into great detail describing how Resnir solos the orc chieftain and about 15 other orcs, and randomly swears that he'll defeat his father after he beheads the orc chieftain. Following the session, we're all talking about the session, and the DM asks us what we all thought of Resnir. He, well, we only just met the character, so our answers were pretty lukewarm. But looking back, the DM had clearly put a lot of weight onto the question. As the game progresses, Resnir starts showing up more and more often, and becomes more and more obnoxious, constantly monologuing about some prophecy and his destiny to one day slay his father. Another black dragonborn who was being set up as the big bad evil guy? The problem was that when the party didn't really show much interest in Resnir or voice this to the DM, he would only double down harder and make Resnir show up more often or be connected to quests in the most forced way possible. The party's helping with rescuing a kidnapped villager from a goblin cave? Resnir shows up and, uh, saves the party with a trail of dead goblins behind him. The party's investigating a trail of heists? Resnir is too, and it's somehow related to his whole crusade against his father. What the DM is doing is funneling the party into a story-involved NPC. This is a normal occurrence in all kinds of quests, but here's how to do it properly. There is only one question to ask yourself when making a plot point revolve around an NPC, and that is, why and where do the players matter here? Because if the players don't matter, then why are you playing at all? The DMPC needs to have some deficiency that makes them unwilling, or unable, to see the quest through. That's where we get quest givers and escort missions. Play the DMPC game with the yes, but rule. They need to fall short. You can make them powerful, but they only stay with the party for short periods of time. Or you can make them purely a support character, useless in combat. You can make the DMPC a MacGuffin. The reason everybody hates on DMPCs is because oftentimes DMs have no clue how to balance controlling the entire planet with control of a regular character. Instead, using their control of the world and control of the party member together to self-gratify all over the game. And the DM is about to prove my point perfectly. It got to the point where almost every encounter we had with an NPC 
that wasn't about Resmir would either... Resmir or Resnir? The, the spelling was different at the beginning of the story. Well, all right, we're switching up. It got to the point where almost every encounter we had with an NPC that wasn't Resmir would either keep talking about Resmir or it would lead to Resmir. At one point, in desperation for something, anything other than Resmir, the party started galloping away from him on horseback during one of his monologues about honor and duty, etc. And the DM describes Resmir continuing his monologue as he keeps up with the party while on foot and we were on horseback. The party had just about had enough when we all confronted the DM about the fact that we weren't enjoying everything revolving around this dragonborn, that if he could ease up just a little bit, to which the DM described that, This story is about Resbeer, and I'm not changing that. This is always the wrong answer. When I run a game, I tell two stories, the story of the mission and the story of the player characters. Putting that much of the story's weight on an outside factor, like a forgettable Mary Sue, is poison for your D&D game. Whenever something is happening in-game, you should ask yourself, how does this advance the mission, or how does this advance the character's development? The party's in a fight? Mission. The party's role-playing a night around the campfire? Character development. The party is listening to an NPC that they don't care about monologue about his daddy issues in between watching him handle everything himself? There isn't anything for the players to care about or matter in, making the D&D game little more than a live reading of the DM's self-insert fanfic. But let's see how this pans out. Two players immediately left the group and did not return, and the rest of us stayed out of either a sense of desperation for a game or morbid curiosity. The remainder of us had had enough, however, and conspired to get our revenge on the DM's NPC, who had become the object of all of our frustrations. In the final battle against Resmir's father, I guess the DM thought he was throwing us a bone when he had Resmir be grievously wounded and beg for our aid. See, According to the DM, this was our defining climactic moment, defending his DMPC from a bunch of mooks until he could gather the strength to pull together and defeat his BBEG father. But we didn't do that. Instead, almost as one, we all decided to swear our allegiance to Resmir's father and attacked Resmir while he was down. We were a pretty high level at that point and dealt at least 200 damage to the Black Dragonborn in one round. When the DM seethed and tried to retcon our actions or hand wave them away, we pushed back and used his own words against him over how injured Resmir was. Finally, after a long moment of silence, when the DM realizes his precious DM PC is fucked, he utters the words I will never forget. As you sink your weapons into the body of Resmir, you feel no resistance, and Resmir the Black fades. It, it's a hologram. This is just petty, laughably petty. The DM can't risk the players having the slightest bit of agency, so he destroys the world's consistency and breaks his own rules. Unless... This was all a meticulously constructed twist ending, and it's the best one you'll ever see. Over-involved NPC the world is obsessed with? It's so poorly written and forced, it's almost as if they were programmed to make him the main character. This is backed up by his ability to run super fast, only to keep up with the horses, and never again. Seems like he gets special privileges over reality. On top of that, it was mentioned earlier that he can just appear places when he feels needed. It's like traveling, but fast. On top of that, there's an inconsistent technology level that only exists to serve player one. The world is behaving so unnatural, it implies reality is fake or somehow wrong. This can only mean one thing. The party are NPCs inside a video game world, and they are rebelling against the player. Who will win? Animator or animation? 
Whoever is playing as Resmir clearly has modding capability and console commands, so it will be a long journey to find the source code and disable his ability to play his character. I had my doubts about the DM, but this was very, very well done. I left the group and so did the others from what I hear. Oh damn it, they quit the game. I changed my mind, the party was completely wrong. I can't believe they ruined this awesome storyline. I'm ending the video 